Alright, what's going on everybody? It's your boy. I'm back for Black Ink Crew Chicago Season 1, Episode 2. Probably should have did this before Hip Hop. You know what I'm saying? I'm kinda, it's kind of fucked up. I'm repping my whole city and this is like the second set of videos I'm doing. It's kind of fucked up, right? I know. Uh, so, gonna go ahead and hit that. Y'all already know. I done got back today. Welcome back to me. Sipping on a motherfucking long guy in the shit. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and just jump straight into it. So Don is left at the shop because you know shit crazy between him and Ashley. Uh huh. We'll we'll further discuss that. What what else we got? So um, Charmaine's in here saying she ain't boo boo the fool and shit. That uh you know he ain't gonna you know get with the kitty cat no more. And um, I'm sitting here just like. Mm hmm why you lying? Why, why, why? Well, come on now, come on. You, I, I'm, I'm feeling like Friday, Friday. Like you ain't got to lie, Craig. You, you ain't got to lie, Charmaine. You ain't. You know what I'm saying? Again, like I said, if, if you down the fuck, you down the fuck. It is what it is. If you trying to be in the relationship, to be in the motherfucking relationship, but you gotta pick what side you're gonna be on. Now you just gotta pick what side you're gonna be on. Do, do that for a brother, please. What else you got? So uh, Rachel has a uh, business opportunity that may take her away from Chicago, and if that's the case, then that means that Ryan's son will be going too. He's not trying to. Well, he's not trying to travel to see his child, which uh, I totally understand. But seeing as how the mother has uh, so custody, you know, she has to live her life. She has to, you know, fight for her dreams as well. So. Um, Several more episodes I gotta watch after this. I am hoping uh, that things work out for him, but uh, we'll see when I get there. What else? Um, Ryan uh, tattoos his father, so his um, grandmother is uh, Japanese. So if I'm doing the math correctly, more or less, that means he's anywhere from like one eighth to one sixteenth Japanese, which is uh very nice. But at the same exact time, that right there sheds a lot of light, especially in the first episode, him doing um a Japanese inspired tattoo and also doing another one this time tattooing his father because of his uh Japanese uh heritage which I'm just like that is fucking go that's beautiful. It really is the fact that you know he's tapping into it, you know. Hopefully he does a lot of uh you know uh African inspired tattoos, but if he doesn't, you know, at least he's tapped into, you know, part of his heritage. What else? Okay, so now we got Ryan and Charmaine. So Ryan does not have gloves. Now Charmaine is the manager. He is the owner. So a part of her duties apparently is making sure that everything is GTG. You know what I'm saying? Good to go. And uh, you know, she don't understand why he mad. Now, I'ma say this from, you know, a leadership aspect. My thing is this. Cause like I said, I've worked at Target or as the Bushi say Target. You know, I've uh, done internships at, uh, you know, a banking uh, firm and other stuff. So it's one of those things where it's like, if that is your job, one thing you should do prior to leaving is making sure that every station and every place is already stocked with the necessities. Making sure that everything is topped off. I've also worked in a uh, diner. Well, not really a diner, but like a, oh, well, I worked in, uh, when I was in college, I worked at a, uh, the uh, food establishment there. And uh, two of the, yeah, two or three facilities because there was like three different uh, places. But what I'm getting at is like it's just certain things you do. You make sure everything is topped off. You make sure that if something is empty, that is replaced. If something is just about empty, there's something else right there. So if they run out, you know, they can go ahead and replace it. So she's not doing that and she's upset. And, you know, Ryan even mentions, you know, pretty much if you weren't riding on the motherfucking dick and shit of Don, then you would be doing your motherfucking job. And she's mad because it's like, well, it's not like we're fucking, you know, while we're on the clock. But you fucking while y'all at work, though. I'm just saying. Oh, hold on now. Hold on. Hopefully, I don't get hit, you know, with this shit. Because y'all know if I come to hit a motherfucker of, you know, for putting videos shit. So hopefully, that don't get my ass in trouble. Because, you know, I'm watching this shit on playback and shit. But I understand Ryan's frustration. On some real shit, I'm not really siding with um Charmaine. I'm not. Because, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, if that's part of your job, it's part of your job. 
you know, if you are the manager and there is no one else to do the job, it's your job to sit here and make sure that everything else is restocked. So that's where I stand on. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about it. What else? Um, now, Don has the fucking audacity to not tell his baby mama, Ashley, the whole truth. Because she wants to know what it is between him and Charmaine. And he has the opportunity to come clean. Now, he had been sleeping at 9 math for the past several nights. He has the opportunities to come clean. But he doesn't know how to come clean. And it's like, my dude, just tell her the fucking truth. Because here's the reality. You know, whatever you do in the dark it's going to come to light it's going to surface you can only sit here and tell a lie for so long before you start sitting here and mixing up the lie with the truth and the truth will lie and lie with another motherfucking lie at the point that somebody starts to see like okay your story isn't matching up from right now to the last time that you told the fucking story and like she's not going to fucking find out and she even says so if i go ask charmaine she's going to tell me the same exact thing that right there should have been the indication like you know what just tell the truth because she's pretty much telling you without telling you but she's telling you i'm going to go ask charmaine so you might want to tell me the truth and he's definitely like not doing that oh shit my phone is going off oh no people uh it's my youtube people say welcome back yay i'm back uh <laughs> and um yeah the one thing that i will say that i don't like and i think that um everybody in youtube land does not like is the fact that ashley is willing to use her child as leverage against don and i don't think that is a great thing my thing is just because he's not the best boyfriend to you and uh, my sister, uh, Lady Nika, she said this in the video, just like, just because he wasn't a good boyfriend, just because he wasn't a good uh, husband, whatever, just because he wasn't good to you does not necessarily mean that he won't be a good father. And do not, uh, you know, don't uh, <clears throat> keep him from being just that. You feel what I'm saying? Especially knowing that, you know, the children will eventually see this. And you can watch black ink Crew chicago and tell this is very very organic this is very very fucking real you can tell now i don't know about seasons two three four five and six but you can tell with this very first season like this shit is very organic and what you seeing is what you seeing so you know i like ashley i like her rawness y'all know i'm from the west side i'm from uh you know the west side of chicago i said well, i'm from the west side of chicago i've been drinking and you know even seeing 21st of Sir Mac it's just like on the fucking bus stop and shit that Halston oh my god it's making me just like oh my gosh I miss my I'm sorry y'all know I get giddy anything fucking Chicago and shit but yeah yeah I had a lot of train of thought oh well so I will come back this is probably gonna be a long ass fucking review but this is the first part um for the uh first uh commercial break I will be back Alright, so this next part should be fairly, fairly quick. Hopefully, hopefully. But y'all know I get low with like a motherfucker, right? So, uh, you have Kat. Uh, she's getting ready to tattoo a guy. And he has pretty much his whole right arm as a sleeve. And it's pretty much dedicated to the hurt that, you know, women can play. <laughs> Don't y'all know it, right? And, you know, just everything, you know, and it's just pretty much him uh, just showing that he's been hurt. And uh, even, what's her name? It's not Danielle. What's her name? Uh, Charmaine. It's just like, oh, it, you know, I didn't know a woman would have so much power. I'm kind of looking like, really? Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Y'all got the nectar of the God between y'all motherfucking legs, but you ain't know that women had that much motherfucking power. Miss me with the bullshit. But uh, as she's tattooing, you know, she reveals in her confessionals that uh, she was in a relationship and it went sour. And uh, pretty much, um, you know, it was at that time that she had opened up. And after opening up, you know, after a year, things went bad real fast, unabruptly, and it was just crazy. And it's because of that that she's hesitant to open up right now to uh four and again uh, if you guys are watching my empire videos it's one of those ways like i said that if we are able to go back and and analyze our past you know whether it be isolated events or our past as a whole we'll learn really quickly that the way that we handled a situation so way back when or whatever 
is how we tend to deal with things in our present day or it's because of this that we respond the way that we do and it's only in knowing our past realizing our past understanding our past and then therefore owning our past and not letting our past own us that we can move on to a brighter tomorrow and a brighter future hopefully you guys got that i'll be right back okay so don and ashley are on a painting day it is actually very nice cute all that good shit um and they pretty much uh discuss their plans for the future i'm not going to go um into explicit detail but apparently you can tell that both of their views are completely different what i want to say is this uh i'll probably wait for december you know i think uh much love from uh, ky does a uh don't stop November, I mean December, something like that. So whatever it is, I'll probably do my damnness to do a video each month. And I'll talk about my stance on, uh, I guess we say relationships and everything. But for me personally, I'm one of those where I get the big shit out within the first couple of fucking days. The first couple of times of us meeting each other. We're going to talk about the big shit. We're going to talk about the plans. We're going to talk about, you know, where you see yourself going. Uh, where I see myself going the whole nine because I don't have time for the bullshit. I am 28. I'll be 29 next fucking month. Okay. I ain't got time for the bullshit. I'm too fucking grown for it. So we're going to talk about this shit. We're going to talk about what the fuck you see yourself going, where I see myself going, what you want, what I want. If these things in some way, shape, or form don't fucking line up or if we don't intersect at a certain fucking point and then go straight, then ain't shit I can do with you. We can be friends, but that's the fuck it. So, yeah, if y'all watching this, I'm not saying that y'all need to be like that when it comes to dating people. And I'm not saying that you need to ask those questions at the very beginning. I recommend it. That may not be for you. But what I'm saying is don't waste 6, 9, 12, 26, 36 months in to want to ask some questions your ass could have asked on day three, four, five, and six is all the fuck I'm saying. What else happened? Uh, I'm just talking about later foundation. That's all I'm saying. What else we talk about him? So Rachel accepts uh, the job in LA, which means she's taking the boys, and of course that is hitting Ryan very, very hard. Um, and he even said that uh, after losing his sister, his son was his uh, salvation. Uh, pretty much his motivation and it was his um it was that catalyst if you will to be able to walk away from bullshit so I think I'm dropping more juice on this video than I have in a hot minute but again I told you I'm coming back with some fire yeah but uh, what I recommend is this uh, especially with my line of work you know I have to remind myself why I decided to raise my right hand and all this other stuff as I was seeing when part of my uniform not all of a part of it but having to remind myself you know why i decided to do what it is that i did and even learning that in the uh end if shit go left i can't sit here and try to bring up this and that because they're gonna look at me like well you were not thinking about this and that when you did a b c and d so i'm not gonna think about this when i have to sit here and come up with x y and z on your ass so what i recommend is for many of us in our everyday lives whether it be at work or just in our personal lives when things arise whatever we hold dearly to our hearts especially family children husband wife partner whatever it is that when we get into certain situations that could go left that we think about those things and we act accordingly instead of waiting until we're actually in the moment that we have to deal with things and we're asking someone else to consider the fact that we have a family consider the fact that we have to sit here and provide for another it's something that we need to be thinking about the whole entire time and i respect the fact i tip my yam or yamaka my kipa to my brother ryan you know what i'm saying it ain't got shit to do with us being from chicago but he is so like i i love his maturity i really do he is very very fucking mature and i tip my hat to him the fact that he is willing to think about his family his son more or less and that be the thing where if somebody come at you crazy before you sit here and you interact with them you thinking about this one thing and you know keep you from necessarily going off the deep end despite the fact him and van straight up threw a motherfucker out the motherfucking door on the first episode but i ain't gonna talk about that but i'll be back all right so 
we have a cat who is uh wanting to throw Ryan a birthday party because uh, she wants uh, to take his mind off of what's going on. And it's his 29th. So given the circumstances and everything and whatnot, if anything, and given the time period, either Ryan and I were born in the same year, 86, or he was born a year before me, which is 85. I'm just throwing that out there, okay? Just throwing it out there. 80s was the best motherfucking year. I don't care what nobody say. Like I said, if you're not an 80s baby, I don't know what to do. But anyway, uh, apparently Don is sexually frustrated. He has uh, been texting uh, memes to uh, Charmaine. So, pretty much giving her the wrong idea, the wrong impression, the wrong everything. Y'all have to see me because I do multitask. I am a uh, air travel controller, you know, just to put that out there. So, I do like to multitask and I do other things. But, um, sending her all types of crazy tests and whatnot. And Charmaine is like, I want to be treated like, you know, a lady and whatnot. And I'll be on some real shit. You know, I, I talk about kings and queens. I do believe that we are kings that they were that we are queens some of us are princes and princesses and some of us are princes and princesses in training meaning we don't know that we fucking possess a fucking crown and that uh we have it you know i do believe that and again i have no problems with somebody being you know a whore those are those that are you know are more classy like the you, you know whores I don't have a problem with anybody being a hoe, and not male or female. You know what I'm saying, bitch, maid, whatever the case may be. I don't have a problem with that, but no one understand who you are, and when you choose to agree and accept and acknowledge that you are something greater, then go ahead and go for that. But I don't give a fuck how long you have been working with somebody, knowing somebody. But when you spread them legs so fucking quick, I have an issue with that. Now, again, if you DTF. If you down the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Like, if that is what you are, then be content with that. But you can't, in Yarrell's personal opinion, in T. Spelling's personal opinion, you cannot be down the fuck, but at the same time, want to be treated like this on the motherfucking side. I might be wrong. Y'all let me know if I'm wrong. But again, ladies, even to the men, you can't. It, the, someone will only treat you the way that you present yourself and you allow yourself to be treated on some real shit so if you present yourself to be less than if you present yourself to be a peasant to be a gesture to be any of these things you cannot be upset when somebody treats your ass like that because that is what you are presenting now when you not only present yourself to be a king or a queen but you own and possess the mentality and the attitude of that that's how the fuck you gonna be treated because i'll be honest with you on some real shit when the fuck have you ever seen a lot like imagine a lion and they see a uh, gazelle one is injured and one is fucking healthy when the fuck have you ever known a lion to go sit here and chase after this fully fucking healthy you know gazette when it knows that it's an injured one right here when is this lion finna ever overexert itself for some healthy meat when it can go for some injured meat and still get the same amount of motherfucking meat maybe even slightly fucking less what i'm getting at is this Men and women alike know it easy prey when they fucking see it. I, I hope y'all picking up what I'm putting down. So what I'm saying is this. If the opposite, not the opposite sex, because again, it is what it is, 2015 minutes, bitch. But if the opposite of you knows that your ass is easy fucking prey compared to the next motherfucker. And they know they go, they gonna have the word two, three, four, ten, fifteen 10, 15 times harder for that motherfucker over there. They gonna go ahead and snack and be, you know, I'll be all up on your ass because they know they can get your ass and leave your ass smooth the fuck on the side. So if you want to get treated like such, you need to act like such. And that's all the fuck I got to say. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. My bad. <laughs> I'm looking at my nose. <clears throat> Excuse me. Never dying and saw that one some pages was stained and shit. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck that shit was. I don't know, y'all. Any fucking way, Ryan was uh completely surprised at his fucking birthday party. Which was nice, you know. I'm I'ma just be a little in my feelings and salty and shit because a motherfucker ain't never had a motherfucking surprise party and shit, but I digress. But <laughs> he was uh very surprised. Uh Don and Charmaine are dancing and whatnot, which is just like, you know, okay, so apparently Charmaine has not learned. And I, uh, I'm hoping what I'm about to say is wrong, but I foresee me probably having to go in on Charmaine every fucking week and for the next several episodes. Um, Y'all probably gonna get the other episodes tomorrow, because after this I'm gonna go outside. 
I'm gonna blaze up right quick and then I'm gonna take my ass to bed. I got trending topics and shit to do in the AM, all that shit. Y'all know how the fuck I do, right? <clears throat> Speaking of which, trending topics. 1300, aka 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm pretty sure that's what um, it is right now in uh, fucking North Carolina. So be ready, because uh, I'm, I'm coming back, okay? I got some motherfucking shit to talk about, okay? We're we going to talk about Patty's Pies and Monique and all that shit. We're going to talk about them, okay? Back to what I'm saying. So, uh, what else? Uh, Danielle pulled Charmaine uh, into the uh, bathroom. Trying to talk sense into it, but damn it, y'all ass is drunk. You can't talk sense to a drunk person, especially when your ass is drunk too. Can't do it. Can't do it. I know you can't do it. And uh, eventually Charmaine and Don go at it, and Don's trying to tell her that you knew about my situation. I ain't got shit else to say. Okay, so the episode pretty much ends with uh, Four trying to um, calm his brother down. And, you know, because he's already, I would assume, had legal issues. And he doesn't want him to, I guess, go back into that. And you have uh, Don punching uh, the window, which is not necessarily glass or whatever. But praise God it wasn't because the shit shattered. Would have been charged the whole entire fucking nine. And it's just like he doesn't want to be reached or listened to. I would hope, pray, and assume. I know most of this crew is watching the uh, episodes themselves. I know they're watching the reviews. I want to give a shout out to my sister, Lady Nigga, because they have been watching her shit. Uh, Ryan actually had uh, posted a clip of uh, her review on his uh, IG. So, you know shout out to her but hopefully the uh, crew is taking this time to kind of like look back and see how they present themselves and not necessarily uh you know front for the camera but for season two because i do see a season two coming hopefully they will um present themselves in a different light hopefully but that's pretty much it it seems like uh episode three which i am going to get to tomorrow because uh even though it's not late, it's uh, just shy of 8 p.m. in North Carolina right now. Uh, I was on a motherfucking 18 hour bus ride to get the fuck back here amongst other shit, trying to get shit settled. I done just put out, this would be the fifth fucking video on y'all asses, so I think I deserve going to fuck the bed early and all the other shit hydrating. I got trending topics to do tomorrow amongst finishing off this set of videos, doing the Real Housewives videos, and even trying to get Love & Hip Hop out to y'all, which y'all might get all the Love & Hip Hops on Monday. We'll see. So, that is all that I have. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Y'all know I gotta rep my motherfucking city to the motherfucking fullest. So, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I will be back to give you guys some more of this good old loving that I got for y'all and for my city. And I will see you guys then. Peace.